Hello, everyone, and welcome in to CrushTheStreet.com. I guess we're in uh, Looneyville today. $8,200 Bitcoin. Uh, 12 months ago, if I was to tell you that we were going to have $8,200 Bitcoin, it would be absolutely absurd. I mean, some people had the vision for it, but I think even the bullish of the bulls are shocked at how well the cryptocurrency market is doing today uh so we're going to talk about that with ryan charleston uh he's a jack of all trades he's a crypto enthusiast and he's involved with sweetbridge and we're going to learn about this blockchain application today uh ryan thanks for coming on crush the street with me yeah thank you for having me ryan let's talk about what's going on with bitcoin at the moment it doesn't seem to be shaken too easily and it keeps going up <laughs> as if you threw a dart at a board and said buy bitcoin you, you would be you would have been right at any point in history i mean we are at all time highs essentially as we speak what are your thoughts on this yeah i think it's it's pretty crazy uh to think that i originally bought my first bitcoins at 10 and 12 dollars each and to see it at over 8000 is just it's it's amazing. Um, unfortunately, I don't hold those same bitcoins that I bought at ten or twelve dollars, uh, but I did okay otherwise uh, with things like Ethereum and and other tokens recently. Uh, but I, but as far as Bitcoin, um, I, I think honestly, much of the recent run up um, is is very seems to me to be very speculative, um, and. Um, I'm not, I, I guess I'm kind of indifferent to, you know, where it's going to go from at this point. Um, I did have um, a prediction that I actually made almost five years ago uh, on a blog when, when I had my Bitcoin start at Bitcoin And I said that by October of 2018, we would reach $10,000, uh, a $10,000 Bitcoin. Mm. So we're actually almost there. And if you add the price of Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash, you're, you're pretty much almost there. So it's 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 fascinating. It really is, yeah. And you know, I mean, what are what are your long term thoughts? Now you sold your ten dollar Bitcoin, and I don't blame you. You know, it's went up and up and up. And even if you were up ten times at a hundred dollars, that's a that's a still a really big return on your money. Uh, but despite that, what are your thoughts as to what it can do. I mean, people are talking about $50,000 Bitcoin, $500,000 Bitcoin. Is this a reality for you or is something like Bitcoin Cash a real threat to the Bitcoin legacy or SegWit dominance? Well, um, I actually do think uh, Bitcoin, at least in the short term, say the next year or two, um, just because of the the nature of where we're at in the space, I think Bitcoin could go to you know twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand a coin. Uh, now that's not to say that that's its true intrinsic value, but I think the momentum in the market, the amount of money coming in, uh, the fact that Bitcoin still is regarded as somewhat of a, a reserve currency for crypto. And it is kind of the main on ramp for most people, you know, starting to get into crypto. So I, I do think it still has some positive momentum behind it. Um, now, granted, I don't hold any Bitcoin at the moment and I haven't in a while, um, mainly because of my own fears over, I guess, the uncertainty, um, a lot of kind of political drama, obviously, as we've seen lately with, you know, forks and, um, yeah, so that I, I, I kind of feel like I need to see that play out first before I hold any. Um, the other thing that kind of concern me, concerns me is I don't really see um, enterprises uh, adopting Bitcoin or dealing with Bitcoin. Um, although that's not in and, a, in and of itself a reason for Bitcoin not to, to have a future. But I, I do see that as being kind of a, a drawback. Uh, and just the other cryptos out there and the other blockchains, uh, including Ethereum, uh, that that sort of have upgraded the capabilities of, of a blockchain and what they can do uh, and what they can be used for. Um, 
and re- reducing fees, you know, making transactions faster. Um, so, uh, you know, when you have that kind of competition, it's 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 not, it's an uncertain future. So I think the risk reward ra- ratio for for investing in Bitcoin isn't what it used to be. Um, but again, I, I still think it could go to you know several tens of thousands per coin. Yeah, and and that's fair. I I, I think most people, yeah. if they were to really step back and ask themselves what they think is going to happen or or what is possible to happen, they they see those as potential futures. Now, what's interesting is we did see a pretty big pullback in the altcoin space, excluding Bitcoin, since the end of August uh, into uh, September, and it it pulled back for quite a while. And it it really happened in relation to Bitcoin, because Bitcoin uh, recently was was skyrocketing past 6,000, 7,000, and a lot of the altcoins were weren't doing much at all. And and as of the last week or so, we've really seen a move in Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and a lot of the other altcoins in the space. So uh, any comments on what we're seeing in terms of just general trends? Yeah, I I mean, I think that uh, Bitcoin is still serving as sort of the entry point into into the crypto world uh, for trading and investing. Uh, So you know, they come in, they buy Bitcoin, and only some of that money might trickle out to the alt and and Ethereum and Ethereum tokens. Um, but I think that's actually going to change as we start to see on ramps, uh, you know, allow for money to come directly into other tokens. So where Bitcoin's not the the main entry point, um, and so. And, and to answer your question about Bitcoin Cash, I really do think uh, Bitcoin Cash has a considerable amount of merit. Um, I mean, it is, after all, the you know the pure definition of the Satoshi White Paper, uh, which is titled you know Bitcoin: A Peer-to-Peer Electronic Cash System. So if if that still remains the true vision, and everybody agrees on that, and there's consistent consensus on that being the real Bitcoin then that could pose a serious threat to, you know, BTC. So um, it'll be interesting. I'm I'm definitely watching it. um, But, you know, like I said, from from, kind of from the sidelines. Sure. Yeah, let's talk about this recent news about this $31 million theft in Tether. And really, we didn't really see much of a... A reaction from Bitcoin. I know a few years ago with Mt. Gox and the Silk Road and just Jamie Dimon's comments, we've seen some bigger reactions to some pretty devastating news. And so I'd like to get your thoughts on how it relates to Bitcoin, but I'd also like to get your thoughts on how it relates to ICOs and regulation and uh, governments really entering the the space and, and uh, regulating things. Yeah, so I actually started reading up on this this tether uh, issue uh, several weeks ago, um, and I was telling a lot of people about it because once I started looking into the, this and some of the claims that I was reading about, um, I'm like, wow, this this is serious. Like, if this is true, we've got a major issue on our on our hands, just in the, in terms of the crypto space. Um, if it blew up, it would be bigger than Mt. Gox. Um, much bigger. So, and, and as, as of right now, the jury's still out. Everybody's kind of looking at it going, what's going on? Now we have this hack. You know, the question is, was it a hack or was it an inside job? Nobody really knows yet, but it's one of those sort of black swans that I think we really need to pay attention to and, and look at because, you know, maybe, maybe a big chunk of the Bitcoin price surge over the last month has been because of counterfeit tethers. You know, if that's the case, you know, we could be, you know, and there could be a big crash coming soon. So, and I'm not saying there is, I'm just saying this is, this is definitely another, another area of concern for me. And I think if that happened, yeah, it affects Bitcoin. But I mean, since Bitcoin's still the leader, it it could bring down the rest of the market, even if the fundamentals are still good for Ethereum or any other token or, or altcoin. Um, it could bring everything down with it, at least for a period of time. You know, it could be several months, you know, that it it could uh, 
we could enter a, a kind of a little mini bear market because of that. And then as far as regulation, I mean, when that happens, regulators will rush in. Um, there'll be a lot of knee jerk reactions. Um, and then, you know, that maybe even some bad laws get, you know, uh, made. And so that, that kind of, that's a concern for me as well. You know, one of the things you talked about was Bitcoin being the on-ramp to the the digital currency space, and I totally agree with mm-hmm. you. And something like Coinbase obviously largely popularized Bitcoin, and then, the, you know, as an on-ramp to, to everything else. And I'm wondering if you think that we'll get to a point where Bitcoin isn't the the leader, and you don't log into Coinbase and see Bitcoin at the top or Gemini and you just see everything or I mean if if you log into your account and it looked a little more like Bittrex and you know everything kind of mixed up and all the different cryptocurrencies is that going to change the landscape of Bitcoin yeah I think I think it will Um, and I I actually think the future for on-ramp the on-ramp into crypto isn't so black and white in terms of oh I come into um, I switch, I convert my uh, my uh, dollars to, or my fiat to Bitcoin or Ether or whatever. Um, it could be that you just deposit into a stable coin. So um, something that's pegged to your your fiat, that's the, of your jurisdiction or your country. Um, so it could be dollars, euros, yen, and so you're into crypto, but it's a kind of um, Peg to the dollar, one to one, not not tether necessarily, but something like it. Um, and I'll get into that later. And you know about uh, you know sweepers is actually um, creating something like that. Um, but you'll come into crypto uh, through that stable coin, and then from there you can pretty much buy any crypto uh, in in the account. So. Ryan, let's talk about some of the most exciting things, in your opinion, coming out of the crypto space at the moment. And what do you see coming down the pipe? I mean, we're in an, in a time when really the you don't know what you don't know. And mm-hmm. I'm just wondering if you know more than I do, and I'm sure you do. Uh, I, I don't know about that. I, I, I know a lot about the space, but it, even after f- over five years, I feel like there's so much more to learn. But as far as exciting things coming out of crypto space right now. I, um, there's probably three major themes or three things that trends that I'm, I'm looking at that I'm excited about. Uh, the first is is how we're using smart contracts and distributed computing or, or distributed storage uh, to essentially rebuild the internet uh, and, and do it in a more fair and more equitable, equitable way. Um, and I, I know this might sound crazy, but you know, I think blockchains will actually lead us to build multiple internets, so, or maybe we'll call it the multi-net. Um, <laughs> so I think ultimately blockchains and cryptocurrencies are just the beginning of a larger trend in decentralization or decentralizing everything, uh, moving away from centralized groups, you know, which often have very monopolistic power, um, which is bad. Uh, and so that's one. I, I think the... The second thing going into 2018 and 2019 is uh, finally seeing commercialization of blockchain applications and distributed apps. Um, a lot of them, I think, happening on Ethereum, uh, moving to the mainnet, and finally seeing mass adoption. So um, I, I do think we're, we're finally at that stage or entering it, and we'll, we'll finally get to see uh, regular people, uh, many with no technical knowledge or understanding of uh, kind of the, the deeper side of blockchains, and they'll actually start using cryptocurrencies for for things in their life, um, sometimes without even knowing it. Um, maybe even investing in cryptocurrencies just as commonly um, as they would, say, stocks or real estate. Um, and then the third thing... Uh, I think that this is one thing that I've, I've really gotten interested in lately um, is the, the social impact side. So I, I really think that, that cryptocurrencies and blockchains, uh, you know, can be brought to poor countries and poor societies and lift them up into a modern financial system. Um, and I think ultimately this leads to um, some pretty profound effects um, 
to in terms of reducing unnecessary human suffering in, in a world that is really quite abundant, uh, and we just don't need this anymore. I think blockchain, blockchain can be a real catalyst in that area. Um, it could even reduce or even eliminate, you know, terrorism, crime, and overall just make it a more safe and equitable world to live in. I totally agree. It's a big dis disintermediary of just everything that we're we're accustomed to, the banking system, and I mean, I think in Puerto Rico, uh, Mike Maloney was talking about it when they had the mm -hmm. they had the big hurricane come through. They were only allowed mm -hmm. to pull out fifty dollars a day from the ATM, and that's a time when you have more need for money. You might need to pay somebody to give you water, or you might need to buy some food, or pay a premium for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Things are probably going to get more expensive in a catastrophe situation, and there there was a situation where they made it even more difficult to access currency. And that's one of the mm -hmm. beautiful things about cryptocurrency is that there there is no such thing as those type of controls. You are your own bank, and that's a, a very beautiful thing. So mm -hmm. I guess, Ryan, with that, let's talk about SweetBridge. You were telling me a little bit about it prior to the call, and I, I think it's very interesting. I, I, I believe you guys are, again, pioneers in this new frontier, and uh, it's uh, some of the smartest minds have been attracted to blockchain. And I've said this before, where there's money to be made, you attract smart entrepreneurs. And uh, so, yeah, tell us about what you guys are working on and what we can look forward to. Yeah, definitely. Uh, so SweetBridge is a pretty ambitious project, and it's the reason, uh, one of the main reasons why I joined. Uh, I originally was going to start my own uh, blockchain startup again, uh, this uh, past summer, and then I, I discovered SweetBridge, and once I learned about what they were doing, I was I was blown away. Um, they're attracting an all-star team, um, people who have a tremendous amount of experience uh, in their respective disciplines, um, and so at a high level, SweetBridge um, is building a blockchain-based protocol stack for global supply chains and commerce. So what does that mean? Uh, we're using or leveraging blockchain technology um, to, to bring liquidity to a $54 trillion market. Um, so there's currently you know, $54 trillion with a T uh, locked up in global supply chains. And we feel that you know, focusing on a very large um, you know, pool of money that can be unlocked uh, will, will really take blockchain technology to this, this higher level. And the trickle-down effect from that is, is, has profound effects. Um, to sort of um, fulfill this vision, we're also building uh, a blockchain alliance. And so this is bringing together um, you know, projects from, from small startups all the way to uh, Fortune 500 companies uh, to bring their assets into uh, the, the platform and then um, bring liquidity uh, for everyone. So it's even from consumer all the way up to business uh, enterprise use. Um, and then we're all actually building uh, centralized applications or uh, interfaces so that people can interact with, with blockchain and cryptocurrencies in a very easy and familiar way. Um, we're also doing a, a crowd sale, uh, which just started. Uh, we're going kind of the, through the first phase and then uh, releasing, doing a public release in, in December for our, our main token, which is Sweetcoin. Ryan, tell us about that stable coin or how that relates to what you guys are working on with Sweetbridge. Yeah, so as a part of our, our token economics and the token design, uh, Sweet, Sweetcoin is the essentially a utility token, but more specifically, it's a discount token. So to be a SweetBridge member uh, in order to uh, use our application and reap the rewards and benefits of the application, um, you need to hold some SweetCoin uh, to be a member. Uh, we do in our crowd sale, in order to even participate, you have to do full KYC registration, submit your documentation so I know who you are. Um, 
And then, so it's, it's kind of like getting a bank account, essentially. Um, and we're taking this very seriously. Um, but Sweetcoin will be your membership token. And it'll be uh, what you are able to hold. Uh, and it's limited in supply. It's an ERC-20 token. Um, and uh, to accompany that and to make everything work, we had to you know, create Bridgecoin. Uh, and Bridgecoin is the stable token. So Bridgecoin will be pegged uh, to the U.S. dollar initially, but we'll also have other Bridgecoins that are pegged to other fiat currencies. Um, and so initially, you'll, like I was mentioning before, um, you'll come, the on-ramps in the future will be to basically convert your dollars to Bridgecoin, and now that's a crypto form of the dollar or a crypto uh, that is pegged to that value. And now you can basically buy... Uh, sweet coin or other coins with that um, and that has some some uh, that has a design to be used for the liquidity so you can for example our first um, sort of case study or use case I should say um, is basically the zero percent um, loan so in the interest-free loans um, using the blockchain and using sweet coin if you own sweet coin a certain amount of it you'll be able to either reduce or completely eliminate uh, interest fees essentially using your own assets as collateral and then taking a loan against those assets. Um, and what is so the what is the collateral again on this? Initially, in the beginning, it will be Bitcoin or Ether. So we're starting with crypto. Um, it's the easiest, fastest use case that we can test. And eventually, uh, we will open that up to other cryptos, tokens, alts, yeah, uh, even physical assets in the real world. So you could collateralize your artwork or your home or, you know, anything that has a, a value that can be determined uh, in the physical world. And then you can tokenize that and use that as collateral to borrow against. That's incredible. Um, yeah. It really, <laughs> you know, the application of it is, is you know, amazing in terms of what we're seeing. Yeah. So someone will... Uh, initially use Bitcoin to collateralize the the debt, uh, but they're borrowing uh, yes. Bitcoin. So what what is, is that like 20% equity that or 20% down type of thing that they need to, so, to borrow? How does that work? So, so basically the way it would work is let's say you have, you currently own some Bitcoin or Ether, and you put that into uh, your sweeper's wallet and you lock it up in a vault and then use it, it's through a smart contract that locks this up and when it's locked up let's say you have between your ether and your your bitcoin a total of a hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoin and ether you lock that up and you can borrow against it up to 50 percent mm -hmm. so you can borrow you could take out a fifty thousand dollar loan and that loan will be provided to you in the form of bridge coin. So you get 50,000 bridge coin. And then you, from there, you can do whatever you want with it. You can take that bridge coin, purchase more ether or purchase more Bitcoin. You could take it out and, you know, put it towards a, a down payment on a house or buy a car or use it for whatever you need. Um, then the thing is you're now, you now have a loan with yourself, which you have to pay back. So you'll, you'll create your terms, you're, and you'll pay yourself back over time. And then once you've paid yourself back, and only when you've paid yourself back can you, can you unlock those funds that were tied up. But during that, those Ether and Bitcoin were locked up, they could be appreciating. So it's a way to still, still get the appreciation of your assets without selling them over the long term while accessing liquidity in the short term. Mm-hmm. And then what's paid back? You're obviously paying back in, in Bitcoin or Ethereum, and, and if it is appreciating as well, then you you got to come up with that money uh, to, to pay yourself back. Yeah, you're just paying back the bridge coin. So you were basically given, you know, in that example, you're given 50,000 bridge coin. So now you just have to pay back over, over whatever, you know, terms you, you created for yourself. If it's five hundred dollars a month or whatever, you just pay yourself back that back in Dogecoin in your in the application, 
and it just it just basically drops your balance as you keep paying it off and you could pay it all back at, in one let's say after a year you decide I just want to pay it all off you just you bring fiat, you convert fiat into Bitcoin and just pay it off. Or in the event that, say, the, the Ether and Bitcoins appreciate substantially, you could just sell off some of that Ether and Bitcoin to cover the loan. Hmm. And basically un- unlock um, your assets that were, were, were tied up. Interesting. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it so is amazing. I, I guess I don't fully... Uh, understand every aspect because it seems like there's so many potential scenarios that you can create for yourself with this uh, setup you guys are creating. It's just, There's so many opportunities, right? Yeah, so I, I just gave you one example of, you know, for, for the crypto investor, you know, how this would work. But, you know, like I was mentioning before, we're, we're mainly going after, we're mainly going to apply this long term to global supply chains. So if if you think of the hundred thousand dollar example, now throw a few more zeros on the end of that, and we're looking at global supply chains that have uh, tens of millions, hundreds of millions, uh, at any given moment locked up and inaccessible uh, in, inside supply chains. And so uh, a business uh, can now pull money forward and, and unlock that you know that value and then use and get liquidity to continue their operations. Uh, we also give the example in, in some of our documentation about say farmers, like a rice farmer in, in Vietnam who um, will create a, um, a season's crop of, of rice though, but by the time that they, they distribute it, they, they won't get paid for that sometimes 90 to 120 days later. And so that creates a lot of problems. And this, this applies to you know, many different supply chains around the world. So being able to pull that liquidity forward and not only, not only pull it forward, but eliminate the interest charges and the finance charges. You know, it's been, as our, our CEO has given many examples and some of the, the talks that he's given, has given um, that a bag of rice, actually 20% of it is just financing costs. So if we could take and reduce that to zero, then the farmer and other participants in that supply chain can save money there, and then the consumer can save money. So everybody wins. It's powerful, powerful tools there. Uh, Ryan, hey, man, uh, thanks for coming on Crush the Street. Uh, I want to give you an opportunity here. If you have any like closing thoughts or just things that you want to share with the audience, please do. And please let everyone know if they want to learn more about Sweetbridge, where they can go and what they would find. Yeah, thank you. Um, appreciate you having me on. And so I would just ask people to check out sweepers.com, uh, like us and, and subscribe to our social channels, uh, you know, get on our email list, and we'll invite you to the, the, the public release of the crowd sale coming up in December. Um, we also have a chat forum. You can jump in there and connect with me and, and other people on our team directly if you have any questions. Okay, Ryan. Thank you for coming on Crush the Street. It was a real pleasure. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Ken.